It is in Lapland that we find the last spaces in Europe that are devoid of any human presence. It's a world in which the erosion of the glaciers has left deep traces. Although it is near the pole, extremes of climate are attenuated by the proximity of the Gulf Stream. Thanks to the effects of this warm current, forests have grown in an area which should, in theory, be covered by ice. The Semi were the first people to inhabit Lapland. As there was no one before them, the Semi, or Laps, are what we call an indigenous people, the only one in Europe. Norwegian Lapland, like the rest of Norway, suffered immensely during the Second World War. The land of the reindeer was bitterly fought over by the warring nations. The Sami flag flies alongside the Norwegian flag outside the Sami parliament, which has been built in Karashok. The design of the building is based on the shape of the traditional tent. The people's representatives are elected from among the Sami living in Norway. Norway, in fact, is home to two-thirds of a community numbering about 70,000 people. They are Sami from father to son. It's the bloodline that prevails, but you can also become a Sami by speaking their language, which knows no frontiers. Belto Koro works in the parliament's library. Lapland is uh, in, uh, what we call in uh, my language Sapmi. It's the area in Scandinavia where the Samis are living. That means uh, from the middle of Norway to the middle of Sweden, middle of Finland and north, and to the Russian side to the Kola Peninsula. The Sami have developed a real civilization of the reindeer. This providential animal is one of the pillars of a culture that is at one with nature. The traditional way of life and art in all its forms bear witness to this. Following the ancestral architectural style, the roofs of the wooden houses are made up of several layers of birch bark covered with earth and grass. The Sami have for a long time led a semi-nomadic existence. They have gradually settled and given up their lavu, the conical tent which is similar to those of American Indians. Wood has always been the most commonly used material for solid constructions. Nowadays, it takes on very pure contemporary lines, designed to let in a lot of light, a rare commodity in northern latitudes in winter. Like the light and wood, the Sami language and books are part of the heritage. The very ancient Sami language originated in the Urals. North of the Arctic Circle, the climate is harsh, but the people adapt. There are hotels that are carved out of the ice, and clients move around the corridors on sleighs. While you may enjoy a deep sleep, wearing a nightcap is warmly recommended. Cold and snow and a natural environment that lays down the rules are part of the way of life in Lapland. a way of life which compromises with the elements while showing no lack of imagination. Among many clever tricks, there's one simple rudimentary system used to make a fire in any circumstances. Josef Per Bulio has mastered the technique. That's my safety matchstick, so that when the matches are too wet, I can use it instead, in any situation. Getting about is not a problem, as long as you have the appropriate equipment. In winter, football is played under a protective roof. You can do your shopping in commercial centers without worrying about the climate. Practically everything is available, but the cost of transport is reflected in the price of the goods. The best solution is, as always, to buy local produce like fish or reindeer sausage. In fact, there's no lack of products from abroad, but the price tags can sometimes give you a shock. 
The weather conditions don't inhibit people's getting around or their leisure activities. So there's nothing to stop you going to the cinema on your snow scooter. Sitting on terraces carved out of the snow to watch a film on the widescreen is part of the lab experience. Hostesses provide you with reindeer skins and make sure that the ice creams are at the right temperature. The dog sleigh is one of the traditional means of transport. The important thing is to keep the dogs fit during the summer. Daylight never completely disappears in summer. It's uh, just about midnight. It's what's known as the midnight sun. People who live in the far north are used to it. It's just something you adapt to. In the summer, we, we don't sleep so much. It is, um, we don't need so, so much uh, sleep because I think we got very much energy from the light. When I'm tired, I go to bed and then I sleep. It's a matter of getting used to, and uh, it's a matter of having uh, good curtains in your bedroom. It could be difficult if you have a job. It, it is not that problem. You have to stand up, you have to rise in the morning and you have to go to the job. You need to go to work in the morning and you go back, uh, come back from work at the same time as in the winter. At the end of winter, thousands of reindeer have always migrated up to the summer pastures. Transhumance is still an unchangeable right. The wild reindeer has practically disappeared and the species has become a semi-domesticated animal. Today, the large herds are threatening the already fragile ecosystems. There's a plan to reduce the reindeer population to lessen its impact on the environment. But that doesn't take into account the resistance of the breeders who jealously defend their family heritage. Farming is not very developed. Over the whole of Norway, this sector produces only 1% of the gross national product. On the other hand, fishing is a traditional activity for the semi, because the cold waters are rich in plankton. Fast flowing rivers are teeming with trout and salmon. And in the evenings, in their camps, fishermen enjoy the local specialities. Very good. The first natural resource is energy. Hydroelectricity attracted industrial activities to the region at a time when energy was transported less easily than it is nowadays. Today, wind energy is an appreciable complement. Various materials are to be found in Sami craftwork. Wood essences, rocks and coloured cloths are often used. The reindeer alone provides several basic elements. History, nature and traditions are a great inspiration to the highly creative craftsmen. The Coastal Express Company owns about a dozen boats that ply up and down the coast. This company has been a true institution since the end of the 19th century, when there were no road links in the north of the country. The boats transport cars and goods, but also provide comfort worthy of cruise liners. On board, all commodities are available, and passengers can enjoy some surprising entertainment. For example, the presentation of the royal or king crab, the largest species of crab in the world. It was introduced here from Kamchatka. Another spectacle as fascinating as it is surprising. The Aurora Borealis. <whistles> Communications are made easier by the sea which borders the country right up to the far north. The road network makes light of obstacles, thanks in large part to tunnels, some of which have doors to keep the temperature from falling too low in winter. 
The North Cape Tunnel runs for seven kilometers under the sea. The edges of the roads are often marked with highly visible posts because everything can very quickly get covered by snow. To avoid the risks involved in getting around in winter, air travel is more reliable. In Norway, the network is very comprehensive and Lapland is no exception. The Sami believe that the sky is full of spirits, a belief that in theory is incompatible with the Protestant religion that the majority of the population follows. But the traditional religions are not the only ones practiced. It's official religion of the Sami now is Christianity, but shamanism is still present in many forms in the Sami society of today. For Madhu Kapura, the close relationship of the Sami with nature explains their belief in shamanism. Uh, but it's not the old, uh, it's not the dominant religion anymore as it was until about the uh, 17th century. So today one finds uh, shamanism still in healing traditions, in kind of folklore and in many other ways you find the shamanistic worldview is still very present in Sami culture today. The most important thing I think about the Sami traditional religion, and I prefer to call it like that, is that, that it was uh, this intimate link between the belief and the reality. So it was totally linked to daily life. So the belief would give very clear guidelines on where to fish, when, how to behave in the nature, very clear guidelines, how to behave to other people. In the area of Kautukeinu, Sami wear the kofte, the traditional costume, when they go to Easter Mass. The finely embroidered designs on the clothes differ from one geographical origin to another, but only a practiced eye can distinguish between them. The men's costumes are different from the women's and can also vary according to age and social status. The costume is a very strong element of semi-identity. Another element of their identity is the yoik, a mixture of song and poetry. For specialists in Sami culture, the yoik is revealing. It isn't a song about something, but it is to explain how a person or a situation is. You can hear from the yoik how the, the person are if it is sad or, or if it is very a funny boy, it can uh, describe who the person is. The yoiker will express and yoik the person, or nowadays also motorbike and snowmobiles, reindeers, other animals, to express their relations to and connections to those objects and, and persons and animals. The yoik tradition was very important to us. It was a way to communicate with people, but it was also used as a strong identification tool within the Sami culture. The fame of some Yoik singers reaches far beyond the frontiers of Lapland, as in the case of Marie Boyne, a real star. Sami consider her as a genuine ambassadress of the arts. Many Sami gather in Kautokeino for the Easter festival. It's their way of celebrating the end of the long dark winter. 
for the occasion, the Sami wear their traditional costume. It's also an opportunity to take part in various competitions, for example, lasso throwing. The lasso is used for catching reindeer. Kautukeno is the reindeer capital, reindeer being the main economic resource of the town. The reindeer is not a docile animal. To make it comply with the rules of the race, its owner has to be really determined. And the animal's sense of direction is often unpredictable. When you need to break, there are various ways of going about it. On the snow, there are activities for all ages and for all types of vehicle. From a very young age, children become familiar with one particular contraption which will become one of their essential modes of transport the snow scooter. Snow scooter competitions are among the high spots of the Kautokeino festival. There's even a young beginners category for juniors who dream of becoming great professionals. The scooter is driven by a caterpillar track, a system that was first used in Quebec in the 1950s. The introduction of four-stroke engines reduced the scooter's noise and pollution. In summer, Lapland finds its colors again, and the town of Alta wakes from its torpor. When the light returns, the people are eager to get out and about again. With the exception of its small church, the town was completely destroyed during the Second World War. Finnmark is the largest department in Norway. It is also the least populated and the population is unevenly distributed because 90% of the inhabitants live along the coast. The Semi are made up of four distinct groups. The mountain Semi, the forest Semi, the Semi of the lakes and those of the Arctic shore. There are many of the latter in Norwegian Lapland. They practice fishing and have become completely sedentary. Upstream from Alta, the river Alta has carved out the deepest canyon in northern Europe. The Sautso Canyon is an awe-inspiring 400 meters deep and 10 kilometers long. Finnmark means literally land of the semi. 95% of the department's land belongs to the Norwegian state, which took possession of it in the absence of any declared owners. In fact, the Sami used to know nothing of land ownership. Today, they are claiming it back. The Sami are guaranteed rights for stock breeding, and one law gives them rights over the land and water resources of Finnmark.
there are considerable mineral resources. For centuries, slate has been worked here because its great quality is that it can be split into sheets. Many primitive rock carvings have been recorded near Alta. They were discovered at the beginning of the 1970s and have been designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. The oldest date back more than 6,000 years. Isabel Guissard is a specialist in Sami culture. Here, we have a group of three bears that went too close to the reindeer herd. And over here, you can see the hunters that are trying to kill the bears, because bears are predators and they often kill reindeers. The pictures, representing animals and scenes of daily life, provide precious clues about the way of life in prehistoric Lapland. There have been Sami in Scandinavia since the earliest prehistoric times, but their origins are still not clear. In summer, outdoor activities change radically and there's no lack of space to practice sport. For a few weeks, sailing and many other open-air activities enjoy an appreciable advantage that it's hard to find elsewhere. Right now it's uh, seven after midnight and it's, uh, it's like this uh, the whole summertime from uh, mid-May to August. So you can play uh, 24 hours golf here up in Lapland. River fishing is strictly controlled, and the rules can change from one place to another. Here, fishing is authorized in summer between 8 o'clock at night and 4 in the morning. The River Alta is reckoned to be one of the best salmon rivers in the world. Salmon fishing is open from the 1st of June to the 30th of August and the permits are sold at a very high price by drawing lots from the month of March onwards. Hans-Ulrich Wiesloff knows the river well. We have rapids and we have the fantastic canyon. And we have many stories about the canyon. People that have been there, the boat gone up and helped them down because they thought they was better to climb in the moon. This is also the best fishing place is up in the canyon. For the Sami, everything in nature possesses a soul. The mountains, the rocks, and the rivers can all come to the aid of those who honor them. As you travel north, the vegetation becomes more and more sparse. Trees gradually give way to short grass. Moss and lichen enhance the land with a few colors. This is a region of tundra, a Russian word borrowed from the Sami. Reindeer feed mainly on lichen. In summer, they improve their usual diet with, among other things, grasses or tree barks. Heading towards the North Cape, the town of Honigsvog was completely destroyed in the Second World War. The town is now home to the busiest port in the north of Norway. Here, winter and summer alike, you have to wrap up well. Why? Quite simply because this bar has been entirely created in the ice. Even the glasses are made from genuine Arctic ice. It's an original way of breaking the ice. And films about the far north are shown on a screen made of ice. It's a tradition as you leave to make a wish as you throw your glass into the sea. 
and when my wish comes true, I have to send them a postcard and tell about it. So as not to be directly exposed to the ocean, the locality of Chillefjord was established deep in a fjord. Most of the houses are orientated to derive the maximum benefit from the daylight. At the time when the sun should have gone down, the light is still sparkling on the water. You don't have to fight against the nature. You are not clever if you do that. You have to live with the nature and protect yourself, of course, but against it, you'll lose. The traditional habitat of the Semi is a good example of the harmony that one can have with nature. In the old days, uh, the buildings here around was like this turf. It is gamma in Sami. It is a hut covered by turf all, uh, all over. Here the materials are totally natural, as in the old days, and their efficacy is proven. I use the grass because it is very good for, for heating, and inside it is very quiet because it is um, a good isolation, both for the cold and also for the noise around here. Some of the fittings accord an even more important role to nature. In the sleeping room, there I have a, a window in the roof, because in, uh, I heard that in Japan and on the Philippines, there are 80,000 people waiting for coming to, uh, to the north to make babies under the north light because they believe that in Japan and the Philippines, that the babies will be very nice. The Sami wish them every happiness in the soft light of the Arctic winter. The days are very short. The sun will rise no higher on the horizon. For the Semi, the sun is a god and is worshipped most in winter. Alta in winter. In mid-January, the town is bathed in half-light for three short hours. In the hardened snow, a door covered in reindeer skin stands out. It's the entrance to the Ice Hotel, The finishing touches are being completed just before the season opens. Compressed snow is easy to work, and the ice is decorated with engravings reminiscent of ancient motifs. The bar and reception are decorated with ice sculptures. The ice produces unusual qualities of light and sound. Apart from a few decorative elements, ice is the basis for all the hotel's main equipment. The director is both sculptor, designer, and is in charge of the decoration. Everything is planned so that all the fittings will give a season's use, but to do that, there is one essential condition. The temperature is uh constant, it's like a fridge, uh, it's, so it's between five to six centigrade below zero. Surprise, a bridal suite. Couples come from afar to spend their wedding night here. But before they can enjoy the bridal suite, they have to pass by another part of the hotel. This is the, the chapel uh, where we have a lot of uh, weddings this year. We have um, between 15 and 20 weddings this winter and they're coming from all over the world. And on Sundays, there are normally also services here done by the local priest. The reindeer is everywhere among the semi, 
In the Sami language, there are no less than 400 words to describe it. The Sami are very clever at catching reindeer with the lasso. It's very rare to find an animal that answers to so many needs. Reindeer is our way to live. Everything uh, surrounds the reindeer. We, when we take education or work, we combine it to that it suits the reindeer herding. Uh, when we make clothes, we make it out of reindeer skin. We get food out of reindeer. And um, I could say that we plan our life around the reindeer herding. My shoes that I'm wearing now, these are made of reindeer skin out of the reindeer legs. This costume is made of reindeer calf skin. The Adlers, they are used to make knives, are used to make uh, this ring for the lasso. We use every part of the reindeer. The Sami clothing is perfectly adapted to their environment. For example, their shoes with their curled up toes. This shape, this tip, it's practical and it's traditional. In olden days, when Sami used skis, they didn't have snowmobiles. They used skis. They would have a ski under, as normally, but they would have a rope over, so the ski would stick to the shoe and it would not get loose. That's why I claim that the Sami people invented the ski, because we had had these shoes a long time. The reindeer is also remarkably well adapted to its natural environment. The color of its long, thick coat lightens in winter, so it blends into the background. Its hooves spread like snowshoes and enable it to move easily through the snow. The Semi's equipment appears very simple, but in fact, it is very well thought out. Their skill is based on centuries of experience. This is contraction to for protect the baby, uh, to carry it with the other mountains, and also the reindeers. And if you should be so unlucky to, for example, uh, when you're doing working and so on, and lose the children into the river, or uh, to, uh, to water or something, um, it will, because of the construction, automatically turn around, and it will float on the river, on top of the river and it protects the baby. The Semi word for craftwork is daoji. Art is linked to craft, which itself is very much turned to everyday objects. A great variety of materials are used, and the objects produced are not just utilitarian. In Regine Yule's art gallery, they make jewelry inspired by Semi traditions. Metals like silver and pewter have long been worked to produce decorative objects. In Sami culture, jewellery has a very high added value, a symbolic value. Jewellery for the Sami people, as for all the nomadic people in the world, is the main source of happiness. There were no books, there were no music. So jewelry was the answer for this question for beauty, for something more than the basic need. The sleigh dogs are waiting for their dinner. Most of them are huskies, a Siberian breed. The husky is one of the oldest breeds of Nordic dogs. They are trained and fed for hard work. In spite of its small size, the Siberian husky is a very resilient animal. But it's a pack dog and needs a leader. It's a good dog for pulling heavy loads and is capable of surprising feats. Rune Nordus. All of our dogs are bred for racing. We use them in long distance racing. It means 300 kilometers or longer. On lengthy treks, the husky can keep going for a long time without having to stop. Without resting, 
10 hours, no problem. Uh, right now they can start and go 10 hours, rest for two hours, go 10 hours, rest for five hours, and go for days. These dogs, they have enormous stamina and they can go for several days without resting much. In their physical characteristics and their behavior, sleigh dogs are very much like their ancestor, the wolf. All their qualities are brought to serve the group. This is vital in an environment which can very quickly turn hostile. Certain types of terrain call for other means of transport that are just as traditional. The second part, which is the binding system. Dieter Salatu finds the principle of the snowshoe very simple. On skis, you will move quicker uh, because you can slide on the on the ski if uh, the conditions are good. Yeah. On a snowshoe, you have to walk all the time. But this is also the thing that makes it easy uh, for anybody to use, because we used to say, if you can walk, you can snowshoe. Destination, the North Cape, which is not on the mainland, but on the island of Magureuil, access to which is through a long tunnel. The road to the North Cape has, in fact, existed only since 1956. The landscape it crosses is unvarying, especially in winter. At the end of the road, at the tip of mainland Europe, the North Cape appears, with its towering cliffs and their famous geographical landmarks. Between the North Cape and the North Pole, there is no land to be seen whatsoever. The semi made the northernmost tip a place of ritual sacrifice. But in former times, this part of their territory was only accessible by sea, an often dangerous sea. The town of Honigsvog appears crushed by the rocky mass of the far north. Life slows down in winter, but it's a good hub from which to venture out into the glacial Arctic Ocean, an ocean which well deserves its name. Little by little, ice is encroaching on the water in the fjords. A little inflatable boat sets out across the mosaic of ice. For what reason? A diver gets ready and disappears in the icy water of the sea. In the surface it's about between minus one and minus two. Why would anyone want to tackle so forbidding a sea? Answer, a spectacular catch of giant crabs. 
The impressive king crab can be found 500 meters deep, but it usually lives in shallow waters. It's a lot of crabs on the bottom. Of course, not all, all over, but you can easier to find them if you're diving. Every year, the crabs change their shell as they grow. So this is the old shell. Now you see it's totally soft. So this is what is happening once a year, but we were very lucky to find this crab just now because it, I could see that he had changed. You see, still have some of the hard shell left, which is stuck here. In able to grow, they need to do this once a year. So as soon as this is moved, this will swell and get a little bit bigger actually because it's totally soft. But now it's very vulnerable because any kind of fish can attack it and eat it. The crab is brought to the shore. And then what happens to it? Straight from the sea into the pot, so it's, it's really fresh. We just boil it in seawater for 15 minutes and serve it like that without any spices in the water. In Finnmark, a 15 kilo, two meter wide king crab was once caught. Most king crabs are small, but whatever their size, they provide a real feast. The flesh of the crab's six legs and two pincers is really delicious. This pleasure is short lived though, as the king crab season lasts only from October to December. After the meal, a watertight floating suit is absolutely indispensable for this exercise. Floating in water surrounded by the ice flow is a pleasure that can be appreciated only in Lapland. An experience that is not quickly forgotten. It was fantastic. It was not cold at all. I thought it would be colder, but it was fine. Great floating sensation. It's an experience for, for life, but I don't think I should stay in it too long. But just for a short while, it's great. The hardest part is getting back to the laws of gravity. <laughs> Farther to the east, we follow the coast of the Barents Sea. The region has long been coveted for its rich iron ore resources. The road follows the coast through a narrow corridor that stretches between the sea and Finland. As far back as you can go in time and space, the yoik can always be heard. Within a very disparate territory, the Sami have managed to find a common destiny. Throughout the centuries, they have given a soul to everything, to every mountain and to every pond. Today, all through Norwegian Lapland, the soul of the Sami is heard in the enchantment of song.